Everybody knows, you know, Afghani's all blue and we're green. And he said that, and we're talking, and I told the guy that I'm here to help them. And he looked me dead in my eye and said to me, we don't want your help. We don't want your help. We want you gone. We don't want your help, he says to my son. And my son replied something back to him, and he got into an altercation. The lieutenant broke everything up, and he just said, make friends and move on. But my son said, in my heart, Dad, I feel something's going to happen to me. I'm not going to be home in November. I'm going to, something serious will happen to me. And I'm scared I want to come home. And I couldn't bring him home as much as I would hope. Protect my oldest boy. I couldn't over there. But the government could have protected my son. You will let an Afghani military police officer. <laughs> walk right into where my son is in the facility with an AK-47 and shoot my son, my older boy, shoot him dead in his chest and then shoot him in his abdomen and then shoot two other young Marines and one wounded and the other two got away but all I'm asking and I'm asking not just for me but for all the young men in this country that are serving. They don't mind serving for you guys. And Obama, I'm not blaming you. You walked into this war. You walked into something that Bush started. So I'm not sitting here putting blame and pointing fingers at you. I'm going to Dover tomorrow to pick up my boy. I'm going to pick up my boy tomorrow at 2.35. But my boy's coming. He's coming over by me. <laughs> my heart is destroyed. My boys, their mother, they're destroyed. This community of Oceanside is destroyed. They didn't just kill my son, they killed me. And my boys and my friends and family. You see, my, this is just a small part of my friends and family. But we're just begging you. We're begging Congress, the government, who uh, makes the decision to put my son over there, unarmed. From what I understand from one of his friends who was there, he said he was in the gym working out with his, his seven guys that he hangs out with all the time. And they stay together. And my son said out of nowhere, this guy in military blues came in out of behind went in the fence and walked right in into the gym and gunned my son down first and then went about his business to everybody else. If, I'm, if I can get anything out of my son's death, out of his untimely death, this boy was 21 years old. This boy, all he wanted to do was come home. He wrote me a letter two months ago telling me how scared he was because of this guy. And that they allow this man to walk around with a weapon and he looks at my son every day with death in his eyes. And my son said, Dad, I'm a tough kid, but I'm scared I want to just go home. So they allowed him, instead of coming home in November, they were going to send him home. And they said, Dad, I'm coming home in 20 days. And then call me 15 days. Then call me the other day, it was eight days. He said, Dad, I'm going to be home in eight days. I can't wait. I'm going to go home. I'm going to be with you and my brothers. Four days before the kid leaves Afghanistan, this animal comes in and guns my son down. He murdered my son. Can you understand this? But you know what? I know you hear what I'm saying and I know you're looking at me, Congress, and government, and everybody else, all you politicians. I'm not a hateful person. But I know in my heart, not one of you is have a boy. Not one of them is going to be standing by my son's side. Not one of them was with my boy. Everybody in the government, you got a son that's in the Marine Corps, in the Army, in the Navy, they're not over there with my boy. I can guarantee you that. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. My son gave up his life. He was murdered by a piece of garbage that doesn't want him there. They don't want my boy.
They didn't want him. So why is he there? Send all those young men home. Send them home on a plane, and I don't mean next year. I want these boys home now so my son can be known as Gregory Thomas Buckley Jr. Brought all those young troops home to their parents so their parents can hug them and squeeze them. Something that I can't do. I can't hug my boy. I can't hug my older boy who I loved to death, who we used to play basketball every day in the park. Baseball every day of my life. I was with my boys. One place I couldn't save him was in Afghanistan. But you, the government, you could have saved my son. But you choose not to. You choose to allow an Afghani to turn around and kill not just my son. This year, 30 some odd young men have died in the military from blue and green. And you guys just look the other way. I think it's sad. All you think about is your greed. That's all it comes down to, greed, money. You don't have, you don't have your boys there. You don't feel what I feel in my heart. What you think about is, you know what you guys are thinking about. You know what's going on in this world and I'm not gonna get into it until I sit at a table and talk to one of you. If you have the decency to look me in my eye and tell me what happened to my son was right. It wasn't right, you destroyed me. This government, that I love and I love this. I love this country that we live in and I respect it. But I didn't want my son to die like this. If he was in battle, I can understand, but he was murdered. My son was murdered and that's what's breaking my heart. A purple heart. I don't want a purple heart. I want my boy, I want my boy home.